Yeah, I really should have done this before I left the pond site. Lesson learned. Hey there, welcome back to Farmcraft. I'm John. Are you ready to start fighting with some old school tracks with the wrong tools? Because that's what we're going to be doing in this video. I need to fix the slide on which the tension adjuster moves. And in order to do it right, I've got to take those tracks off. To take those tracks off, you can do it with a sledgehammer, usually two people, and uh, apparently a lot of pain. Um, but most people use a pin press, and I don't have a pin press. But I do have some tricks up my sleeve, so let's see what we can do here. First, let me show you what we're going to be doing. In case you missed the last video, the problem is that this mechanism that slides on the rail when you add grease to the track adjuster to tension the tracks has a lot of wear in it. Like all of this space under here is not supposed to be there. There's supposed to be maybe an eighth of an inch, 316, something like that. And not only that, it's worn unevenly so that there's actually an angle on this shoe and then an angle on this rail. So I need to put new wear surfaces on both and I'm planning to use AR400 steel for that, but in order to do it right, there's one of these on the outside and also one on the inside on both sides. And in order to do it right, I've got to get the track out of my way, get the idler out of there and fix that. So the first step is going to be getting the track off. Most modern dozers have a split master link in the tracks to make them easy to separate. This is one of the links and a newer style track would have one that was split and hooks together. When you put the track plate on, those bolts keep the hooks in position so that it can't separate until you take the plate off. This dozer is almost 50 years old, so it's old school. You have to drive one of these pins out, a specific pin called the master pin. If you do the wrong pin, apparently the way it's built, it won't separate. As far as I can tell, this is the master pin on this side. That pin has been welded. Typically the master pin has a dimple in the center of it, and I hadn't been able to find one before, but now that I've power washed it, things look a little different. Now looking at the other pins, this one has a dimple in it. So it's possible that that one is the pin. Okay, on this side, it's one of those two. Let's go look at the other side. So that one's got a dimple. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that welded one is it. Each side only has one dimple. It's funny, before, I guess what I was seeing, they have this like little bump there on all of them. And depending on how caked with dirt and grease and stuff they were, I was seeing those on multiple different pins. But I think that's pretty indisputable. That's gotta be the master pin. So that's the one that needs to come out. So now I need to get that pin eh, probably right there. So that way the track splits here. This can come down and get out of the way. And then this I can chain back to the, the uh, support bracket there and that allows me to get the idler off. This video could be called a tale of two repairs. I have to do this repair on both sides and this is my first time dealing with steel tracks. My first attempt I make a lot of mistakes and things take a long time. The second time through things are very different so it actually makes for kind of an interesting video. Let's start with side one. If I push this pedal this track won't move and same with the opposite pedal. So what I'm gonna do is jack the machine up, get this track off of the ground. I'll hold that clutch pedal in. I'll put it in gear. This one will spin when it gets to where I want it. I'll take it out of gear and then just do everything I need to do on this side. And then once I'm done, I can put this track back on and do the opposite on the other side. That's the plan. We are off the ground. Hmm. 
What are the chances I'm just going to be able to drive that thing out of there? <laughs> okay, there's our victim. I put uh, calipers on both sides and I don't see any difference in size. So I can't tell if there's a taper. But I'm going to give it an old tappy tap with the sledge and let's just see if this thing is going to play nice. Yeah, I don't see any evidence of anything, but I have a new tool that might help me here. So uh, let's go ahead and get that out and uh, see if I can't win this fight easily. So this is an Astro Pneumatic Air Hammer. This is the Thor. If any of you guys watch South Main Auto, he uh, he's often promoting Big Nasty. Well, this is the bigger brother of Big Nasty. This, you know, according to Astro Pneumatic, this is the hardest hitting air hammer out there at least of this size. But there's an issue. This thing is an air hog, and my whole air system is set up with quarter inch. Just to demonstrate, when I hook this thing up to a quarter inch air line, it barely does anything. I mean, it's just not hitting that hard. So um, I need three eighths. And just to show you, these are some three eighths high flow fittings. And you can see the size of the hole there, and there's a quarter inch beside it. There is a huge difference in the volume uh, just going up that eighth of an inch. I also bought a 3 8 hose. Here's the air supply just outside my shop. This is half inch PEX and it's actually just under half an inch on the ID of that that hose so you can put a lot of air through half inch pecs plenty so I should have good air supply to this valve so right here what I'm going to do is put a T and then I'll go ahead and have this hooked up just like it is for my regular stuff uh, but then I'm going to have one of those high flow fittings here that I can plug my new 3 8 inch line in All right, let's see if this thing is gonna hit like an air hammer should. Oh yeah. That's hitting. Let's see if this will do anything to that pin. And I fully expect I'm gonna have to do some heat in here, but let's see what it does. Mmm, nothing. All right, I need to take this track plate off. It is going to be a fight, just like I thought. Here I'm wedging a railroad spike against the nut to keep it from spinning. See that one just rounded over.
Oh, they get moved. It definitely moved. So now I'm kind of flush, so I've got to put a smaller hammer on the end. had some way to keep it in the right spot, I think I could get it. So hopefully quenching it loosened it up a little bit more. Man. Here I get some real heat on that link. You can see it's starting to glow red. It still won't move though. I can't even move it back to where it started. Center bushing I need to heat? Maybe that's it. I would think it would be loose in that central, central bushing, but what do I know? All right, the air hammer was wishful thinking. You know, although it did get pretty close to doing it. But I have this old bent crowbar, and uh, you know, I could fix it, but I have plenty of crowbars. Uh, what I need is a big punch. So this is gonna make a nice one. I think you can see the idea. Doing this alone, trying to hold a punch and swing a sledge, no way. So this will hold my punch in place and it won't go flying away every time I hit it. Hopefully it'll stay in there. Let's get the oxy out. We'll heat this sucker up and we're hopefully just gonna drive it out with a sledge. I'd really rather not move the dozer, but that support is right in the way of my swing, right-handed of course. But let me see what I can do here.
I've got to move the darn dozer. What a pain. Right. Got the dozer moved forward, had to jack it up again, rotate the track, get it in the right spot, and set it back down. So now we are ready to do some pin removal, but I just realized that I'm about to run out of acetylene gas, and of course it's Sunday. I can't go pick up some more today. So I'm going to do as much as I can with propane. I've got my weed torch, and we'll get that good and hot, and then maybe I can take it just a little bit hotter with the acetylene I have left. This big torch puts out a lot of heat, and you're about to see me ruin the temper on those springs. Let's see if that thing's gonna stay in there. <laughs> but it turns out just the pipe I welded on holds that pin pretty well. It moved a little bit. Woo. Now I thought the fight was over here, but I was wrong. Those little spring holders that are on that pin prevented me from driving it further. And I wonder if I had been able to hit it more right then if it would have come out. That's like work. So I had been spraying <clears throat> down here with water around the hub as I was working and didn't really show it, but man, that's gotten really hot. So I just put some water soaked rags on both sides just to protect that hub. There we go. I'm finding this kind of painful to edit because I know the mistake that I'm making here. It's just an oversight. I haven't stopped to think about what I'm doing. That pin's getting held up because it's only in one side of the track. The other side has shifted, so the track isn't straight anymore. My thinking here is to pull on it and straighten it out will make getting the pin easier. But man, the oversight. This might belong in one of those don't celebrate too early compilations. Grief. All right, I've had enough of this pen. Out with you. That darn thing, bowing that chain out. And I'm talking about the track chain here. This link here is getting bent out sideways rather than the pin coming out. Here you can see the pin is somewhat mushroomed out. If I could just get that link to come up and away from the center bushing, then I'd be able to take a die grinder and bring the diameter down, making it a lot easier to get out. Digging bar, the biggest pry bar I have. I've still got this punch in because I wanted it to hold the track so it wouldn't fall down unexpectedly. I mean, 
And that thing should come up. Come up. Are these two pieces linked together somehow? They're acting like it. They both go through this bushing right here, but there's no evidence of a weld there. I think they're just press fit and rusted together to the point they may as well be welded. That should be able to rotate right there, right? Turns out all I'm accomplishing right now is bending this punch. That's gonna be fun to get out. Man. I've bent my pen. This <laughs> is, oh boy, nice. Bet you I had some heavy equipment mechanics looking at what I was doing right there saying that ain't gonna work! <laughs> Screaming at the screen. Sorry, I didn't hear you. I'm using this chain binder and these bar clamps to try to take some tension off of this joint so I can get my punch out. I just need to take some tension off. So I bent this, but I can heat it up and bend it back because I'm gonna need it for the other side. So I'm really trying to get that pin out without cutting it. And I realized I kind of got tunnel vision here. I'm missing something really obvious. Uh, it's probably really obvious when you're watching the video. So yes, it finally occurred to me to release tension on the track by using the track tensioner. <laughs> so the reason I didn't do this straight off is because I didn't want the track flopping around. I thought if it had some tension on it, it would stand up to me hammering on it better. That was a stupid way to think. Let the tension off the track, first thing you do. Even so, it still took two chain binders pulling in opposite directions to free up enough slack to let that punch cooperate. Ooh. Look at that. It's not even that bent. It's out. That was easy. I should just be able to take the, the track off and let it flop down. You know, obviously I'm gonna need a new, uh, new track chain at some point, but you know, it still works. It's an old farm machine that's not gonna get used that often. There's no reason to, to fool with that. So let's see what I can do about getting that off. First thing's gonna be to get a die grinder and get all that mushrooming off of there. All right, now I might have a tool made just for pushing something like that out. Maybe. Come on, man. This is getting ridiculous. Ah, uh, well, I'm out of oxyacetylene, and it still won't move. I smashed it with a sledgehammer a few more times, so I'm just gonna have to wait till tomorrow until I get my oxy back. 
Uh, I got to get this. This has to be smoking red hot to get that thing to move. And um, yeah, disappointing. I really wanted to get that today. All right, I'm done fooling with this thing. I did uh, deburr this again. So here's the deal. There's a, a little place back in there that I can't reach without driving it this way, which I don't want to do. Um, that's going to have to push through. That may be what's holding me up so bad. Anyway, I'm just going to get this whole thing really, really hot. It's going to be glowing red. It's going to be forgeable, and I'm going to be able to push that thing through. I have two options. One would be to try to hammer it through. The problem is, is there's no support on this side. This thing's gonna wobble around. I could try to come up with something to prop it against this, but it's still gonna be kind of a rig. Then I take a swing at it, my pin goes flying off, and then the thing's cooling off before I can get another swing. I think the ball joint press is the way to go. I just have to get this thing smoking hot. Filling that acetylene tank was a hundred bucks plus tax, so, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm actually going to start out with uh, with just my propane, my big propane torch, and get this thing nice and hot, and then I'm going to put some real focused heat around it, and work fast, and hopefully get this thing out of here. I'm tired of it. A little more progress. going to fall. Let's not start a fire. But you know what? I won. I won! So I'm going to get the idler off right there. Not sure how heavy this thing is. It doesn't feel too bad.
That'll do. That bearing feels good. So I know it's gonna come up, you know, my undercarriage obviously has some wear on it, but you know, the bushings aren't worn through and you can see they're a little bit egg shaped and the pin obviously <laughs> has some wear on it. But you know, this thing is not a daily user. This is a farm machine. Putting a new track chain and sprockets and pads. I mean, I could put thousands and thousands of dollars into this thing, but right now it works. And at the rate that I'm gonna be using it, it will continue to work for many years. So it just doesn't make sense to drop all that money when it's not necessary. Now this, actually this rail's so big, I think on camera it doesn't look that bad, but that's about half an inch of metal that's missing. About three eighths maybe, right here on this edge. And the shoe only comes out to there, so the vast majority of it is gone that the shoe rides on. And same with this side. So, and you can see there's the, the previous shim that was welded on. It's totally gone. That's the edge of it right there. I can get my thumbnail under. So I need a new wear surface there and I need to fill in that. But more importantly, I think is this, that's bad. And if you let that continue to wear, it's gonna, you see, you're gonna lose. This is your strength is right there. And as you're wearing down into that, it's getting weaker and weaker and eventually it's just gonna break. And then you're replacing these, which probably isn't the end of the world, but again, you're talking, I'm sure, well over $1,000 on this old machine. Better to get in there now and fix it up so that that doesn't happen. All right, I've got both of those ground and ready for welding. Seven sixteenths, a sixteenth shy of half an inch, 11 millimeters. And over on the near side where it's worse, it's actually five eighths. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a lot of material that's missing. So basically I need to make a triangle that goes from seven sixteenths to zero. While that piece is cooling off, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that cut out the one for the other side. So I've got a bunch of material I need to take off of that. So I'm gonna use the plasma cutter in freehand just to kind of rough it out as best I can. It'll be rough, that's for sure. Gonna grind that down to a triangle. Real close. I can see it's just hitting on the tip here. So I just need to take a little off the tip. Just the tip and only for a second. That is gonna do it. I went ahead and made the shim for the other side because I wanna make sure they're the same. And this one basically comes out to five and an eighth and that's my best surface to use as a reference. That's not going anywhere. I also did the other side.
All right, here we are after grinding. And that's nice and smooth, it's flat. And I think that's perfect. Same on the other side. My thickness here now is five and an eighth. And this rail, if I measure it at a place that doesn't have wear, is five inches. So pretty much, I just need to bring this rail back to five inches. I have quite a bit of wear on top too. When you take a square under here to see how much wear is there, it's not that much. I think I'm just gonna weld that up. I'm gonna build it up and then grind it back and get it square again. Because like as you get to the ends, it's a much smaller amount that needs to be added. And then also here, weld along the top, there's a little bit of wear there. Basically, by hand, because this doesn't have to be perfect, and I've got an eighth of an inch of play, I'm going to put weld beads, build everything back up, and then with a grinder, I'm going to bring it back to where it should be. That's a big, hefty piece of steel, so I'm going to preheat that, get it up to 300 degrees, and, uh, and then lay some beads on it. Just kidding. Looks like I need more from there to there. That's a little more ugly on going underneath than it is on top. You might even say I'm better on top than I am on the bottom. So it's looking pretty good, but I still need to fill in these areas. It's not beautiful, and I actually left it a little bit thick. You know, sitting here grinding and grinding and grinding on this thing, and it's a real pain to do. And the fact of the matter is, it's going to grind itself. And I should have a 16th inch of clearance. As long as it'll go on and slide back and forth and tension and untension, which I'm sure it will, then it's good. And any f further grinding can just happen in place. So that rail is done. Now I get to do it again. I hit the duty cycle on the welder. Welded quarter inch beads pretty much continuously for the past who knows how long. Yeah, that's one thing about uh, where you don't want to buy a cheap welder. You know, they might weld pretty well, but their duty cycle is just not going to be as good as, as a good one. And uh, this is a good welder, but even so, I still come up against the duty cycle on it at times. Just have to wait for it to cool off. Now I'm out of welding wire. Still a little hot to touch, but I can start grinding. And I have a new cheapo grinder. That's a seven inch grinder. Well, I'll tell you why, that thing takes off metal a lot faster than my little grinder. There's still a little bit of an edge, but it's it's enough that 
the bracket will go over it and then it will just wear in. Remember, it wore out, so leaving it a little thick isn't going to hurt anything. I should have bought one of these a long time ago. This takes off the metal so much faster. And guess how much this thing cost? 85 bucks. That's all I gotta say. Oh yeah. Here's our pin. I put it in the freezer thinking it was going to be tight, but it goes in there pretty easily and <laughs> goes all the way through. Yeah, so uh, the pin's now a little undersized after I forged it and mushroomed it and, and ground off all the mushrooming. So to do this right, obviously this thing needs a new track chain. I could buy a new pin or I could machine a new pin, but this is an old farm machine. So we're going to do it uh, without spending a bunch of money or wasting a bunch of time waiting on parts. There, neither side fits now. I made up this, because uh, <laughs> it's cocked at an angle relative to that. But quick on the welder, little spot welding. There, now I've got good backing, good support for the chain when I'm driving the pin in. Before I get ahead of myself, I wanna put these washers back in. Yeah, there's not a lot of interference between those parts, so we're not going to leave it like that. I'm going to weld some washers on to make sure that pin stays where it belongs. It's even got the little dimple in it to show you it's the master pin. That's not going anywhere. Okay, at long last, this side is done. That <laughs> took a long time, a lot longer than I expected. And now I have to do the other side, which obviously I'm not gonna bring you through every step in video. I don't wanna make it boring. Now I do have a different plan. I am going to totally take all the tension out of the track before I start. I'm also gonna get it perfectly flat underneath because I wasn't thinking when I pulled up on those blocks, yes, that brought this up closer uh, so that I'm not down so low to the ground trying to work, which was nice. Uh, and I will still jack it up for that purpose, but when I went to set it back down, I needed flat under the track so that the, the track would flatten out, obviously, not have all the loops in it, because then it would be hard to get it back together. I'm also gonna position the pin in a better place for me to take a good swing at it with a hammer. And, uh, I went and got a bigger hammer. This is a 16 pounder. I've been using this. <laughs> That's more like a regular size sledgehammer that you see everywhere. That's a big boy. They make a 20 pounder too, but those things are surprisingly expensive. I think this will do it. All right, let's start on side two. This is gonna go a lot faster. First, I'm gonna take off two track plates so I have plenty of room to swing at the pin.
all the oils and knocker loose and WD-40 and PB Blaster, heat works the best. And honestly, I think a lot of those products do very little, especially when you spray them on and then immediately try to take the bolt off. It doesn't get down into the threads. They're all locked together. And I suppose it's possible that if you, now if you got the bolt moving and you can work it back and forth, yes, that absolutely helps. I guess if you spray it and maybe leave it overnight, that might do something, something? In my experience, not much. But uh, heat, heat is your friend. Now I'm gonna position the pin in the best place for me to swing at it, something I neglected to do on the other side. And how about we take some tension off this track? Here I'm putting some support behind the pin so that when I hit it with the hammer, it'll stay rigid. I need to be able to hold a punch on there. So I think I'm going to do the same thing I did before and uh, weld on that little collar. So this is a good size for my pin, but it's actually too big for this pin. So it's hitting that pin right now instead of getting up against this. So what I need to do is get that moving a little bit. That drove the pin in so that it's flush with the chain link and I can now weld this piece of pipe on. I also tacked the backing support in place. So I can tell by how hard I had to hit it just to move it a little bit. I need to go ahead and heat. Alright, what do you think? Drive it right out. Wow. <laughs> it sure helps when you know what you're doing. <laughs> when you go at a job making it up as you go, sometimes you work so much harder. That's amazing. So the first one took me the better part of two days after I ran out of acetylene and uh, this one took me about an hour. <laughs> You know, this thing, I can lift it up. It's not not that heavy, but man, if it were to fall and hit you on the head when you <laughs> weren't ready, uh, I, yeah, that that's not good. <laughs> so I chained it twice. That's not going anywhere. Oh wait, I have to do that right. That's not going anywhere. So thinking about this pin, you know, I came at it with that air hammer thinking that was gonna be make it easier on me. And I think what I did is rather than using a big enough sledgehammer and hitting it very hard, which makes the pin move, if you hit it a bunch of times softer, you just mushroom it out. And then once you've mushroomed it out, now it's going to be even harder to get through there. It, it, it's too big. It doesn't fit anymore. And I think that's what I did. Um, coming at it with an air hammer and a sledge that's too small is not only not going to work, it's going to make the job that much harder. So, uh, yeah, lesson learned. Well, I was getting this thing jacked up to make it easier to work on that. And my bottle jack tipped over. I already had some cribbing under there and cribbing on the front and the blades down. So the blades holding the front up, but, uh, <laughs> Gonna do the tops of both of these. The sides actually aren't bad. There's not a whole lot of wear on the sides on this side, so. Just the tops and then these bottom corners is what I'm gonna have to deal with.
Wow. Brand new grinder is dying. I wonder if it's just a bad brush. Go see what we can figure out. See if I can tell where this thing is arcing. We are unplugged. <laughs> that is loose. And it did not come with an extra set of brushes. So getting copper to stick to a brush is a bit of a trick. You can't solder to this. Uh, the brushes are carbon, graphite and uh, it just won't stick. My Google search uh, determined that epoxy is the best thing, but basically you want a compression fit on your wire, and then you epoxy to kind of back it up and keep it in place. So I've got this little piece of copper here that I'm gonna put in, hopefully with the wire, and jam the two in together to give me somewhat of a compression fit. Or not. Crap. I am gonna get a new brush sent from Harbor Freight. This is a minor issue. I don't see any reason to bring back the grinder just for this. They'll send me a new brush, I'll put it in. It'll be a two minute job. Uh, for now, I'm gonna drill in the other side and see if I can make this thing work. This time I tried without the piece of copper, I just doubled the wire over itself and jammed it in. That's pretty good actually. I've got a little friction there. Now I'm going to get some 5 minute epoxy and epoxy that in place. So unfortunately it was still arcing a lot. At first I thought the brush just needed to wear in since I had turned it around, but I determined that the spring is just not pushing it hard enough against the commutator. I think the thing started arcing while I was using it, it got hot, and it changed the temper of the spring, and basically this thing's junk. So yeah, this is going back. I definitely want a 7 inch grinder, so I think I'm going to have to buy a real one. I called Harbor Freight thinking they would just send me a replacement brush. They don't sell any parts for this unit. Harbor Freight does have the, I think it's the Hercules, a step up from this, but they don't sell parts for that either. Um, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to fool with that anymore. Well, that grinder breaking cost me a couple hours. It takes a lot longer to grind this stuff with a small grinder, but uh, that's done. So now we got to do idler wheel and doing the brackets on the idler wheel went just fine just like it did last time so I'm not going to show that again all right we're almost done here surely nothing else can go wrong right so I need to get the supports out from under the dozer so that I can set it down to put the track back on so I'm going to use the blade to lift up the front and a bottle jack on the back. My glove plugs aren't working. So I'm assuming they're not working because this amp meter usually goes negative when I do the glow plugs. And it's not responding at all. It's always something. <laughs> So 
right here is the wire that feeds voltage to the glow plugs. So first thing I'm going to do is put a voltmeter on that and let's see if we're getting anything. Turn the glow plugs on and I got voltage. Hmm. Now I've got another amp meter in series with the glow plugs. And there you can see we've got voltage and no amps. So yeah, I'm on my glow plug connection and I'm checking ohms and I've got an open circuit. So I have a loose wire or or all the glow plugs are burnt out. I guess that's a possibility. That means I need to pull the hood off, the air filter off, the exhaust stack off, get all that out of the way, pull the valve cover and see what's going on with the glow plugs. Ah, oh. <laughs> man, this thing is one thing after another. I could have used bottle jacks and just jacked it up to get that cribbing out of there, but that would have required me getting under the machine and I didn't really want to get under it the way it's kind of cockeyed and yeah, I really want to use the blade, which requires the engine running. Yep. I'm getting connection to there. So from there to ground. Hmm. From here to here. Nothing. So let me summarize, I ohmed out all the glow plugs and they all ohmed out okay. Um, they were actually all about one ohm. And then the wires initially did not have a, a connection, uh, but once I started moving them around, they did get a connection. So I have a bad wiring harness in here. It took quite a while for me to convince myself 100% that that's the issue, but that is the problem. Gotta love intermittent problems. So I'm gonna take this off of here and do some fiddling with it. I have a feeling I've got a, a bad connection somewhere. But actually, right now I have a connection. Let me test this thing. Let me verify I still have that connection. Yeah. So if I plug one of these in, I should get some amperage when I hit the glow plugs. So now, see that? Yeah, now they're drawing. So I took the wiring harness off. Basically, I'm looking for a loose connection. The wires are mostly encased in this aluminum tube and the junctions of all the wires are encased in this plastic. So there's not a whole lot I can do with this. Unfortunately, there's glare on the meter, but I noticed that the ohm reading was varying quite a lot based on the position of the wires. I opened it up to expose the wires, and yes, I thought about making my own wiring harness, but whatever I make is going to be exposed to oil constantly. It's not like I can use electrical tape and wire nuts. I just don't think whatever I made would be reliable. Then later I was actually able to cause it to lose connection by moving the wires. Definitely a bad harness. So Cat wanted $200 for a new harness. I found an aftermarket one for $25 including shipping. I went with that one. Right now though, I just want to get this job done, so I'm going to reinstall this thing and just make sure I've got a connection. It'll work for a little while. This one really is only temporary. Okay, so this should move, and it does. All right. So now the glow plugs are working. Let's see if this thing will start. Yeah, it needs those glow plugs. They are necessary. So in theory, that'll stay put. And then uh, pretty well lined up. I should be able to drive that pin back in. So this is gonna have some interference fit unlike the other side. I'm gonna heat this up just a little bit to help. The pin's in the freezer. I'm still gonna have to smack it in, but hopefully that'll help me out a little bit. Let's see if we can't get this thing in here.
Would you looky there? It actually worked. Oh, this is painful. See these? Recognize those? Those go right behind here where that pin that I drove in is. So let's pop that back apart so we can put these back in. Not! <laughs> this clapped out old set of tracks. It can run without bushings. A lot of these get, uh, they forget to put them back in just like I did and they just leave it like that. It's fine. It's gonna need a new chain at some point. These plates aren't bad. If I weld the grousers higher, the plates could be reused. Uh, what you would need to replace is the chain and you know, actually the sprockets aren't that sharp. I think the sprockets are okay if you had a decent chain. I might be wrong there. I'd have to check specs, see if I could measure I don't feel a lot of wear there. What do you guys think? I think that sprocket looks decent. So it might just be a matter of replacing the chain because the bushings are so worn out and uh, then just new track bolts. So that wouldn't be too bad. That may be in the future someday, but yeah, whatever. I'm running this thing until it's done without these little bushings. Some of my bolts were too messed up to be reused. So I'm, I've got some new uh, track bolts on order. So I'm not going to be able to put them all in right now, but I can at least get the pads back on. All right, that'll work until I get my uh, my new bolts. So they should be here in a few days. Nothing exciting. You've seen me put in bolts. And also the new wiring harness for the glow plugs. Again, nothing exciting. You've seen that too. So I'm calling this job done, finally. This was a heck of a lot more work than I expected. I had in my mind, hey, I'm just gonna go in there, build some stuff up, get a grinder, grind it back, get it to spec, put it back together, blah, 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 it's gonna be quick. I was wrong. This took a long, long time. That said, I'm glad to have this thing without the slop in there. I think that's gonna make a big difference in how this dozer operates. I would love to show you, <laughs> look at that cylinder. I would love to show you this dozer operating, but I have more work to do on it, as you can see. Hydraulic oil going everywhere. I actually have some other things I need to work on before I tackle the hydraulics on this, so it's going to be a while before we get to that. Um, but that's okay. Plenty more content on the way. The list just keeps getting longer and longer. It never ends. <laughs> So thanks for watching guys, we'll see you on the next one. Actually, before I let you go, I'm gonna lift this thing up and down so that you can see how little play there is now compared to what we had before. That's a really big difference actually. You know, it used to be when I would pick the blade up, there was a delay when the tracks would get set down. I'd have to wait a little bit. And I know it, it was only like an inch, but it was quite noticeable and it's, it's definitely less now. Uh, there's still some slop up in the front here that has to be taken out to start lifting the blade. But um, just when you go from lifting, from pressing down to lifting up, all the slop has to come out of the system and that was a big part of it so definitely can see the difference all right guys that was a big job man i'm glad it's done we're going to move on to other things thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one the gift that just keeps on giving <laughs>